massive delts and tries. That's what's on the menu today. And I am seven weeks out from my open debut, the Legion Sports Festival. I'm also uh, 11 weeks away from the 2023 Olympia. So making one stop to do an open show, then I'll keep dieting down the rest of the way to the Olympia. Looking over my training split, we're gonna dive into my delt and tricep focus day. And the idea behind this day is I kind of look through uh, all the stage shots and also who I potentially would be competing against at the Olympia. At this level, you can kind of do that and know who's gonna be in the top five and try to really pick apart my shots of where I need to focus on. And one of those areas is like in a lot of my front shots, looking at my front lat spread, most muscular, some of the side shots. Compared to some of the other guys, delts and triceps were a huge focus area that I want to keep improving on. And basically nearly any male division across the board, you couldn't have big enough delts. <laughs> like the rounder, the wider, the better. So I adjusted some of my sessions to where this one chest push session was a bit more balanced but now I have it a little bit more focused towards delt development. So let's dive into today's session and we will see how I set this up. Just keep in mind, I ha do have another chest session that I do uh, and that one is more chest focused. However, I still absolutely hit delt and triceps on that day. So to start off, and one thing I got a long time ago from uh, John Meadows, rest his soul, was training rear delts first on your shoulder day. And the idea for one is that the rear delt, it's not gonna fatigue and limit you in your other movements, but in all those shots, like most people don't have ever have a big enough rear delt. Uh, usually front delts are very overdeveloped. Rear delt also, like when you look at posing and people even hitting their front shots, rear delt shows a little bit. And really what gives a lot of that roundness on the outside of the shoulder that you'll see, especially in your side shots, giving some projection backwards and giving more thickness and width to the delt. So that's why I train it first. And typically train your weakest body part first so you're fresh for the day. And also body parts for one, that would probably be like really fatiguing might come first, but the rear delts aren't that fatiguing to train first. And so that's why we put them there and starting with a reverse pec deck fly and doing three sets and I, I keep the reps pretty high on these, 15 to 20, which I found seems to work really well for that rear delt area. Usually you start going too heavy, you alter the form, you start bringing more of like the Terry's Major in, more traps in. So it's a very small muscle, so the high rep ranges cater really well to it. What you'll see is my hips are kind of pushed back a little bit on this one. And the idea being is to line up the best, the rear delt fiber. And what you'll see if you stay really, really upright, you actually will have to have, to like have the humerus where it might stop a bit early. If you drop the arm down a little bit, you'll see you'll get more range. Your arm can go back farther. So we stay really upright. It's hard to move in this path. We want to move really in this path. So what we can do is just correct the torso angle. By leaning forward, we now line up in that path where we can really line up the rear delt fiber and get the most range of motion. So that's why the hips are back while I do this and also using a neutral grip because part of the function of this rear delt is to externally rotate the arm and move backwards. So we line up those fibers already in a position where they can work optimally. My exercise is a lateral raise. I use the prime machine because it's really cool with different cam settings. And so what I do when I'm, when I'm warming up and building up my sets is I move it to the cam setting four, which cam setting four makes it really hard at the top. So if you have a hard time connecting with your side delts, when the muscle's short, you're gonna get the strongest mind-muscle connection. So it can make it really hard at the top by putting it on that cam setting. Now, the best for hypertrophy is loading the muscle when it's in a stretch position, so when your arm's at the side. So what we can change is as we get to our work sets, we move that cam setting to five. Now, if you don't have a machine like this, you can do the same kind of setup with cables to where the cable is meeting a 90 degree angle with the forearm at the bottom position. Um, you can even start on dumbbells and get like a really good connection or with bands and do the same idea. 
So that's a, a, how I progress through my warm-ups into my work sets by adjusting the cam settings on these. Now I, I do leave my hands off the actual rips on these because um, what I find is I'm able to keep the arm out in front of me a little bit more, which lines up really well with the, with the side, uh, side delt. When you go all the way out to the side, you run into the rotator cuff actually not being in the best position to stabilize the shoulder. So it's a positioning thing and really all this comes down to when you're lifting, not to overcomplicate it with biomechanics, is that you're able to align yourself in a way that you can naturally move and you connect with the muscle. It's as simple as that. From there, we're gonna move to uh, up forward and to the side delt. So using a lateral raise machine, again, Side delts, it's something that's usually not gonna be big enough with the front delt getting a lot of volume work in. So on this one, I'll do three sets, and then on my final set, that third set, I'll do a drop set, and just go right into it, usually drop about 40% of the load, uh, a time efficient way to get some extra volume in and train to a, a higher effort level. Yeah, I, I can't press directly overhead. It's part of my limitation. So I just do the steepest press that I can do without any type of shoulder pain. And that is this hammer strength press. And I like it because for one, it converges. So the, the movement moves together. You can see those, those side delt, those front delt fibers, they move at that diagonal, which is lined up really well with this machine. So um, that's the main thing when you're looking for like an overhead press or an incline press, that you're able to get in the position where you're, you can get that full external rotation and not have your shoulder bind up or anything like that. After that, I do still have a little bit of pec work that I do on this day. So I know this is more my, my delt tricep day, but I do have a fly. And with the, with the fly, I set it up on a cable machine so I can do like a seated and, and really brace myself well. And trying to find the right angle again is what this is all about. So if you, yourself trying to get the best fly position for you, just take your arm out in front of you and see where you get the best contraction from low down to high. And you'll find a spot where like, oh man, I really connect and squeeze a hard pet contraction there. So that's the angle you want doing your cable flies where you'll get the best chest connection. So you might actually find you need your hips scooted out a little bit on some of these, um, or you need a slight incline bench. And so adjust it to where you get the best connection. Don't just copy like what I do as far as the setup goes. I also like the cables because the same thing with like doing them on a lateral raise, you can control when you're gonna get the most tension in the movement. So doing a press first, um, then going to a fly, I know it's gonna be really hard to get the muscle short. So I can set these cables up when they're a little bit harder, like mid-range, and they kind of let off some as I get to the top. Another key cueing point with a, a cable uh, fly is that don't worry about bringing the hands together. What I want you to cue is bring the bicep and wrap it around the chest. So try to bring the biceps together. Don't worry about the hands coming together. That way you get the full chest shortening to occur and get better cueing in your fly. And I do three sets here and I keep the reps higher on this day because on my chest day, I'm working more low rep work. So three days later, hitting chest again, I can stay in the higher rep range, which is a little bit more friendly for the connective tissue and joints but the higher rep ranges are still just as good for hypertrophy. So that's kind of why I have that set up that way. And also after I've done all my, my delt work, so it's still delts is the focus for the day. So moving on from there, I move into tricep work. Now I always like starting with the press down because it is a little bit more elbow friendly so I can kind of warm up the joint more. Um, also just with, with the push down position, you know, any elbow position you do for the tricep, it's gonna work all three heads. You can bias some of these heads though, like in a push down position, when that arm gets a little bit more internally rotated, you will end up working a little bit more the lateral part of the tricep. Um, but more so the idea here is actually to pre-fatigue the tricep so I don't have to go as heavy on my pressing. And also, I'll get more out of my pressing when I do go to um, that compound movement. So a few things there, warm up the elbow, pre-fatigue the tricep, little emphasis on that lateral head. Uh, I do two sets on the push down. I'm gonna do two sets on the press. So after my tricep push down, 
I moved the hammer strength. It's, a, it's almost a decline press. I use this as a tricep movement though. I take a pretty close grip. For me to get in a position to do a dip, it doesn't work well. I can't get a lot of range out of my tricep and the elbow joint and the shoulders limitation. So a decline press like this, taking a close grip, I get a ton of elbow bend and also the movement converges. So it's coming together at the top, which allows the, the elbow joint to have to press through. And uh, it's a great tricep movement. I like this one after doing my push down so I can get a little bit of pre-fatigue into my triceps where I can really connect well in that press and focus on that. I've, I've gone along extremely well with this one. Again, it's gonna be more like an overall tricep development, not really putting bias towards any, any particular head. Our right, next movement after my uh, press, I go to an overhead cable position. So stretch out the triceps. So this is where you're gonna be able to get that long head and, and uh, of, the, of the tricep, that the, the tricep head that moves over the shoulder joint and connects to the scapula. That's where you actually get that, like when you flex your bicep, that tricep hang that comes down is the long head. And so I would get in a position where you can get that full external rotation. Some people can't get fully overhead and that's okay. Just get to where you can do it and you can extend out this way, that would be perfectly fine. If you don't have that range of motion to get overhead, it hurts your elbow, go across the arm and go this way. That's another cable setup variation you could do to try to train the, the long head of the tricep. So that's our, uh, our tricep order for the day. Do a push down to a press, then to something overhead and stretch the tricep out so it can load it lengthen and really get everything out of all, all the tricep heads and also all the positions and range of motion of the tricep. And usually this bothers a lot of guys, elbows getting overhead and stretching that tricep out and loading it. So that's why I do it last. And we've also loaded the muscle when it's getting short in the short position, when we're trying to do lockouts on the push downs or locking out in our press. So one thing where you can keep pulling out more force production is getting that muscle in a stretch position and then loading it there. So cable's a really good way to do that. So you can get everything out of that stretch don't have to worry about as much about locking out the elbow since we've already really fatigued that part of the range in our other movements. So two sets here. Now, one last thing that I'll do on my push days is calves and abs. Because for one, this is my shorter training session, so it's a better spot to put it instead of the end of a long, hard leg day or even after a back day. I do like calf work on my push day, so what I'll do it is on a leg press which I like the leg press. It's, it's pretty much like a donkey calf raise. So if you don't have one, you could do it on, on a leg press. And I like it because you're fully braced at the hips, the back, not a lot to think about. Keep a slight bend on the knee. And then the main thing here is get the full stretch on the calf and control it. I'm not terribly worried about getting all the way up to the top and locking out. Because again, like the best hypertrophy you're gonna get is loading that LinkedIn stretch position and get up pretty far, just don't have to over uh, emphasize the locked out position for the calf. What the last thing I'll do from a time efficiency standpoint is I will superset the calf raise and using the glute ham raise for my abdominal work. I love the, the, the glute ham raise for ab work because when you get back in stretch position, the, the abs are getting loaded the most. Most crunches, most rope crunches, they get really hard to get the muscle short but again, the best hypertrophy is when the muscle is stretched. So we can get that out of doing them on the glute ham raise. You can also put plates in your chest to make it harder. And again, it's not a big range of motion. Don't move at the hips. We're simply trying to move from the sternum down to the pelvis and do that crunch. That's all it is. If you need some mind muscle connection help, just put your fingers onto your abs and, and feel that connection and that contraction. On these, I do four sets going back and forth, all out to failure. And on my other push day, I do the same thing. So we're getting eight sets of calves and abs across this session. So that's it guys, that rounds out my delt and tricep focus session. Give it a go or set up the volume you need to also keep in mind if you're doing delts and triceps only once a week or you're doing twice a week, you might wanna make that consideration. But for seven weeks out, this is where I'm at and look forward to keeping y'all updated along my prep.